Well, welcome once again uh, to our service here in the parish of Lambton and particularly to those of you who are joining us uh, online this morning. It's lovely to have you with us once again. We're going to begin uh, with the hymn. Uh, many of you would uh, probably know the tune as the Dam Busters, so uh, please stand and as uh, we'll be led in the, in the song, God is our strength and refuge. today comes from Isaiah chapter 25. This is our God to whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have 
failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the prayer for today. Saving and healing God, you have promised that those who have died with Christ shall live with him. Grant us grace to be continually thankful for all you have done for us. And in that thankfulness, to be eager to serve and live for others so that we and all your children may rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from Exodus, 30, uh, Exodus chapter, 30, uh, sorry, chapter 32, verses 1 to 14, and it's headed, The Golden Calf. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us, who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what he has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on your ears of your wives, your sons and your daughters and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mould and cast an image of a calf. They say, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt so offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being, and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say, it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants. 
and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. For the word of the Lord. Psalm for today is two sections from Psalm 106. Praise the Lord, O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Who can express the mighty acts of the Lord? Blessed are those who act according to justice. Remember me, O Lord, when you visit your people with your favour. that I may see the prosperity of your chosen. We have sinned like our ancestors. And verse 20, At Horeb they made themselves a calf. And so they exchanged the glory of God. They forgot God who was their saviour, who had worked his wonders in the land of Ham. Therefore he thought to destroy them. from Philippians 4, 1 to 9. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, dear, and I urge sincere to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companions, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with the Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is excellence, if there is anything worthy of thy praise, think about these things, keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. For the word of the Lord. gospel hymn this morning is rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice we're going to sing it through twice please stand
with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew chapter 22 beginning at the first verse. Glory to you Lord Jesus Christ. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables saying the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves saying, tell those who have been invited, look, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready, come to the wedding banquet. But they made light on him and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see those guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? and he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you once again for your presence with us this morning. We pray that as we open our ears to hear what it is you want to say to us, we will not be selective, but we will hear the whole truth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. theme for today is, uh, as you know, we've been, we've been working our way through uh, Paul's letter to the church at Philippi and uh, have taken a number of themes from what Paul has said uh, to, to the Christians uh, gathered there. The, the focus this morning is on this verse and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your minds, your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Uh, last week uh, I left you this, this challenge. How do we face the, the really difficult thing of always pushing on against the actual struggles that we face uh, as uh, and I said uh, referring uh, to both what Paul said and what the writer to the Hebrews said with our eyes fixed on Jesus and the question which I asked that we might reflect on you know, what are the challenges that each of us face and how do we uh, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus I found that reflection quite challenging. I'll be interested in some uh, of your comments. Today, uh, I want to look at this idea of how do we achieve the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, uh, coming from that last verse in chapter 4. Um, and the passage is, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, 
let your request be known to God. Don't worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We often use uh, that last bit in verse 7 as a blessing. So, for example, if you uh, read morning prayer yesterday or were at a morning prayer service yesterday morning, uh, the, the blessing would have been, may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, uh, so, uh, sorry, may the peace of God which passes all understanding, we pray that that will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. But the question that really jumps out of the page to me is, do we only hear what we want to hear? <laughs> uh, and I want to just unpack that a little bit because I think as human beings we're pretty good at selective, we're pretty good at selective hearing. Uh, some of you uh, may have already seen uh, this cartoon. You never listen to me, you only hear what you want to hear. Yeah, sure, I'll have a beer. Paul, in that statement that he makes, it's a statement with a condition. He says, rejoice always, make your prayers, don't worry about everything with thanksgiving, uh, and, and th but then there's a hook in it. The hook is, is really, do we, do we read the last part without the first part? Uh, a statement with a condition is basically, for example, here, here's an example. If you live in Newcastle, then you live in New South Wales. In other words, if, if the first bit's true, then the second bit's true. In fact, it's a condition to live in New South Wales or to live in Newcastle that you live in New South Wales. Uh, and so the temptation is often for us just to hear what we want to hear. Now, I, for example, uh, children, and I'd be guilty of it, <laughs> uh, as we may have, we may have uh, asked our parents for permission to go out and the permission has been given and that's all we hear. We don't hear the little bits that go at the end about how we're expected to behave and what time we're expected to be home. We hear, we hear the bit about being given permission but we skip over... Uh, the other bits. Uh, Paul writes here about the marks of being a Christian and I'm going to come back to this idea of the conditional statement in a minute. Paul writes here about the marks of being a Christian. Uh, he begins by commanding us to be people of joy, genuine joy, genuine happiness, genuine, not so much the frothy giggle but the general, the general sense of well-being and relationship. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always. And as if we didn't hear it the first time, he repeats the statement. There were many challenges facing the people uh, in Philippi, and we talked about that before, hadn't we, when, about it being a church which was in a, in a culture where there were many, many pagan gods. And uh, that'll come up. Uh, that'll come up in next next week's readings as well. And because there are many pagan gods, there are many there there are many, uh, if you like, uh, frames of reference for determining how they should live their lives. They lived in a they lived in in a mixture of cultures. We had Roman, we had Greek, and we had the Asian or Asiatic uh, culture, all coming together in this city. As a Christian who, who expressed an opinion that was different to the common opinion, they were subject uh, to persecution. There were many challenges uh, for the, the uh, church in Philippi. Paul is saying basically that he knows what might happen, but central to this uh, 
<coughs> he, he, he knows what's happened, but this act of being uh, a sense uh, of gratitude and joy is, is central uh, to who you are as a follower of Jesus. Christian joy is independent of all things on earth because its source is the presence of Christ within us. Uh, I guess if we, we want a sort of a window into that, our two people who are in love are always happy when they're together, no matter where they are. And Christians can never lose their joy because they can never lose Christ. But there is a word of caution. We are called to be gentle. Let your gentleness be known to everyone, Paul says. In other words, our, our exuberance must not turn into extrovert enthusiasm. Now, I don't know what your experience has been, but some people uh, uh, aren't very sensitive. <laughs> and, and the temptation is because you're so full uh, of the joy of your experience that you want to overwhelm those around you. And this can squash people who are sensitive and offend those uh, who by nature are generally quiet and reserved. In other words, not only are we to be people of gentleness, we're also to be people who, and the part of that gentleness is our sensitivity uh, to, uh, to others around us. Uh, Paul points out that there is a remedy to worry. And as we read in the verse, don't worry about anything. And of course, that remedy is prayer itself. Now, this passage gives us a brief overview of what prayer is about. The first point is we are to take everything. <laughs> that means that means the smallest things to the to the most difficult challenges. Everything is is to be taken to God in prayer. There's nothing that's too great for God's power and there's nothing too small for his fatherly care. That's a really important point to make. Uh, if you want a sort of a window into it, it's a bit like a child, a young child, the trust that a young child has of their parents. The trust that a child has uh, when they take everything to their parents. I don't know what your experiences of young children are, but everything, they, everything that happens to them they want to show you, they want to tell you about, uh, they want to present you with things, uh, great and small, triumphs and disappointments, cuts and bruises, provides a little bit of a way of, if you like, it's a window. We have a small understanding because of our children which ramps up into an appreciation uh, of God's fatherly care. With God, who has now revealed himself in Jesus, there is no guarantee that we won't have suffering. <laughs> However, there is certainty that this God, in contrast to the pagan gods, is ultimately in control and that God will always hear and answer our prayers on any topic. Uh, there is a side kick, of course. The answer that we want for our prayers may not be, may not be a godly answer, God will answer our prayers uh, and we, we pray that that will be uh, the blessing that is promised. Well, there are many things we can bring our prayers to God for and I've just got a few and a few little dot points there. We can pray for ourselves. We can pray for forgiveness for the things we've done in the past. We can pray for things we need in the present and for the things in the future. Uh, we can take our own past, present and future into God's presence. In other words, a sort of commending that for change, we can pray for others, we can commend to God's care uh, those near and far who are within our memories and our hearts. And, and that was a bit of what was happening on Tuesday when, uh, when we <coughs> said thanks to God for the gift of life. But as Paul demands, thanksgiving must accompany everything in prayer. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God. In other words, we come to God out of a sense that God is a God that we need to be thankful for and recognise that because of the many blessings we have, even in the adverse situation. And there are many challenges facing our community now uh, because of the pandemic. There are many adversities that have faced our, our community in other times and in other ways. There are many difficulties that families uh, uh, have. But we do it with a sense that God is a God who loves us so much that we have to be do that in an attitude of gratitude. Prayer itself is a great privilege for which we say thanks. You see, everything means in our joys and in our sorrows. Uh, in other words, there's the implication we are thankful, so there's gratitude, but there's also this idea of submitting to God's will. Uh, I mentioned a while ago that uh, as a child I didn't always hear exactly what my mother said when she gave me permission and, and uh, I would kind of you know, worry that I wouldn't get caught as I sort of twisted it a bit. But then when I thought about it, when, it, when I really came to my senses, I realised that if I, if I conformed to the permission I had, I was actually liberated. It allowed me to do much more than I ever really thought about because I wasn't constrained by worrying about whether I was doing the right thing or not. And so submission brings freedom too. Um, everything means in our joys and sorrows because of God's love for us, we believe that God works for our good in everything. We also trust God's wisdom. God knows what is best for us. The temptation is often, <laughs> as I mentioned a minute ago, to play God for ourselves. We must also remember that God's power enables God to bring to pass what is best for us. And that's the thing which we often find a bit hard to take at the time because we have an understanding of what might be best for us. Uh, but in, in that view, it is often self-centred, whereas God takes a view that in blessing everybody, uh, when blessing others, we also bless ourselves. So let's get back to that first statement. A conditional statement means that you've got to, you've got to get the connection if the first bit, then the second bit. You can't have the second bit without having the first bit. If we don't take anything away from this morning, that's at the heart of what Paul's saying. If you do the first bit, you get the second bit. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your gentleness be known. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, with prayer, with prayer, thanksgiving and supplication make your request known to God then and whichever, <laughs> whichever connecting word you want to use then the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds it is a conditional statement you want the peace you take everything to our God when these things are in place then the result is that the peace of God stands like a, like a, a protection, a guardian, a guardian troop of soldiers looking after treasure, for example, to protect our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The way of peace is in prayer to entrust ourselves and to all whom we hold dear to the loving hands of God. And that is it, isn't it? It's an act of trust to take everything, not not just, not, not just the big things, uh, but not just the challenges, but the joys, everything, uh, and uh, to place those in God's hands. Paul goes on to command that our thoughts should focus on all the things that God has given us to be legitimately pleased with and to enjoy. 
And I just quote that verse. Finally, beloved, whatever's true, whatever's honourable, whatever's just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. In other words, don't don't dwell in the in the in the drudge. Dwell in those things which are pure. You've only got to pick up a newspaper, you know what it's like to dwell in the drudge, because all the newspaper stories are about mostly about those sort of things. Paul is encouraging the Philippians to have a view which which actually uh, is is focusing on those things which he's listed. Honourable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable. Anything that's excellent. You focus on those things and out of that will come the change that brings this blessing that Paul talks of. And so, where does the peace of God come from? Why, from the God of peace, of course. Get to know the one and you'll have the other. So what should we think about this week? What shapes your prayers? Do they reflect the teaching of Paul to the Philippians? What is your response to your answers to these questions? Do they reflect the teaching that Paul gives to the Christians at Philippi? Let us pray. Father, help us always to remember to keep thanksgiving before us in all our prayers. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. At the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Forgiven Lord, from the Father and the Son, who is worshipped, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life and the world to come. Amen. Uh, please be seated for a moment. Uh, Rob and Bron have asked for, for prayers for Emily on her first birthday, and I wonder if they just would like to come forward and we'll pray a prayer of thanksgiving.
we give you thanks for the gift of life in Emily. We rejoice with Rob and Bron and Bronwyn and all the family on Emily's first birthday. And we pray that as she, she grows and enjoys the experiences of, of exploring the world around her, that you will protect her, you will encourage her, you will strengthen her, you will give her a knowledge that she is indeed a child of God. And we pray particularly for Rob and Bronwyn as parents. Give them uh, the encouragement and love and strength for the task entrusted to them. In Jesus' name. going to pray for the world and for the church. Let us pray for the preservation of the earth. We give thanks for the beauty and abundance of the earth, especially praying for the right use of the resources of this earth its conservation and for the abundance of its fruits. Father, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for peace and shared prosperity. We give thanks for leaders who serve the common good. We pray especially today for the United States of America. Give wisdom to those who have responsibility and authority in every land that we may share with justice the resources of the world and work together in trust. Father, Hear our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray for our nation. We give thanks for this land and the diversity of its people. Grant that we may so honour one another that all are enriched by our common heritage and freed from poverty and exclusion. We pray for the management of our resources, especially for our commonwealth and state treasurers and governments across our nation as they endeavour to work together. We continue to pray for those working to find a vaccine and for each of us as we share our responsibilities in protecting each other. Father, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us pray for the church and its mission. We give thanks for the good news of salvation for all people. Strengthen us for our work in the world. Empower your church to proclaim the gospel in service, word and sacrament. Unite in the truth all who confess your name that we may live together in love to your glory. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Church of the Province of Uganda and the Episcopal Church of the USA. In Australia, we pray for the Diocese of Gippsland, Bishop Richard Trelaw. In Newcastle, for Bishop Peter and all, all who minister with him. The Cathedral, Corrective Service Chaplains, uh, Parish of Sestock, Diocesan Ecumenical Commission and the continuing ministry in the parish of Lambton. We especially pray for Reverend Chris and the Mainly Music team who begin on Tuesday. Father, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for ourselves and our community. We give thanks for the fellowship of the communities in which we live and work. We pray today especially for all those who work in prison ministry for adult and juvenile inmates, judges and court workers, prison officers, etc. We pray for love in the face of violence and for Christians in this field, both inside and out, to be grace-filled and compassionate witnesses to all. We commend to your keeping ourselves and each other, our families, those who, with whom we work and learn, our neighbours and our friends. Enable us by your spirit to live in love for you and for each other. Father, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those in need. We give thanks for that you are the God who brings mercy and wholeness. Comfort and heal, we pray, all who are in sorrow, need, sickness or any other trouble. We pray especially for all impacted by the coronavirus pandemic, both patients and workers across our health system. Give to those who care for their, them wisdom, patience and gentleness and to all of us your peace. We remember all in need in our own parish, 
especially thinking of uh, Def Turnbull, who is uh, still recovering after her fall. Father, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us give thanks for the faithful departed. We give thanks for your servants in every age. Grant that we, with Elizabeth Fry, prison reformer who died in 1845, and all your saints may be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfilment of your kingdom. Father, hear our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, you have uh, promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith we may by your grace receive through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Please stand as we share the peace in a socially distanced way. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. offertory hymn is May the Mind of Christ my Saviour live in me from day to day.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. For glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup and again giving you thanks he gave it to his disciples saying drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. And looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit. Unite us in the body of your Son and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. We who are many are one body in Christ, for we all share in the one bread. <clears throat> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word.
Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Amen. <coughs> Gracious God, we thank you that in this sacrament you assure us of your goodness and love. Accept our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and help us to grow in love and obedience that we may serve you in the world and finally be brought to that table where all your saints feast with you forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live in word to your praise and glory. <coughs> well, once again, thank you all very much for being with us this morning and particularly uh, a particular thank you to those who have joined us online and we, we trust that uh, your experience too is one that links you in with a fellowship here in Lambton. Please stand now for the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you and those whom you love today and forever. Amen. Our final hymn, Now Thank We All.